All right, we're going to be doing some pretty simple stuff. If you've had some high school um, focus on measures of central tendency, means, medians, and modes. So that should be a review. And then um, in this series um, for this week, we'll also have information related to tying that back to the standard curve, uh, the standard normal distribution curve. So that might be new um, to you. It's a pretty big uh, component of most uh, modern day statistics. So, and actually the old time statistics as well. So, all right, random variables and probability distributions are focused um, upon in part two of the Intro to Biostats book online. So if you wanna read up on those, uh, you can. And the focus of today is gonna to be on the mean, median, and mode, the three basic measures of central tendency. Um, there's a couple examples of some other types of means that we'll also discuss, but we're going to first focus on what is called the arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean, and we're going to be comparing right here the sample mean versus the population mean. So whenever you see the Greek letter mu and the big letter n, usually in scientific papers as well, most scientists hold true to these, Mu refers to the population mean, the actual true mean of the population. And big N, big N refers to the total population size. So if there were 4,500,000 people in Kentucky or 29 million people in Ohio or 31 million people in Ohio, whatever the population is, that's your N. That's your population. And if you were interested in something like the uh, income or the percent body fat, on average, for all 31 million of those people, that would be mu. Now, are you really going to know mu? Are you really going to be able to measure everybody in Ohio and find this out? Probably not. Now, if you were interested in a population that was very narrow, like um, the, uh, I don't know, we'll pick on something, the percent body fat among bodybuilders attending the Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic, the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio, where all these bodybuilders come and you, you know, tell them that, hey, we can uh, sample you um, and measure your percent body fat while you're here and if you do we'll pay you a thousand dollars a lot of people not a lot of people say everybody signs up and does it and you're only interested in knowing your population all the people who are the bodybuilders at the competition and all of them participate we would call that mu that average because you'd actually get everybody usually you don't get everybody even the u.s census as much as it tries to get in and get all the um, other details about every citizen of the United States, um, it, it doesn't actually accomplish that. It gets a lot of people, but not 100%. So instead, and, and measuring 100% is also economically um, not practical in many cases. And you can usually get pretty close to the real mu by estimating the arithmetic mean with an n, a little n, with the, which is your sample. And um, this refers to sigma, meaning you have to sum, you know, all the individuals for whatever you're interested in. And then we have to divide that by n. So fancy statistical nomenclature or mathematical nomenclature to describe what's going on. Um, we're going to go ahead and do an example. You should know the difference between X bar and mu. This is what you usually see in scientific studies because getting the actual true mean is sometimes impossible. So we try to estimate the true mean. So this is our estimate, our population estimate mean, which we call our sample mean. This is our true mean for the population. Kind of hard to get. All right, so how do we measure the average? So the mean, mean it's typically the arithmetic mean when people talk about the average. 
So how do we do it? Well, you all should know this pretty easily. You know, you have a set of data right here. We add all those numbers up and we divide them by n. In this case, 7. So 28 over 7, that would give us a uh, mean of 4. Easy enough. There's another type of mean called the geometric mean. The geometric mean, and that measures the nth root of the product of n numbers. The nth root, meaning the product of n, n being your sample size. So if your sample set is has four people, then the nth root would be four. If you have 10 numbers, the nth root would be 10. If you have 50 numbers, the nth root would be the 50th root. That comment about 50th root or 10th root or whatever root we're talking about may be unfamiliar to you for the moment, but you'll get it here in a second. We typically use this for assessing averages for exponential growth. So here's the formula. So this is where that nth root goes. In the case of a square root, that's 2. In the case of something that's got 4, you'd see a 4 there. And then you multiply these numbers here for a geometric mean. You don't add them. It's the product. You multiply. All right. Now, why do we use it? When do we use it? You might see people use it to compare the means of things that are growing exponentially. So what is exponential? These things are where you see it's kind of this doubling effect over time or a doubling in response to some sort of um, exposure. But in this case, usually we see it with regards to time. An arithmetic growth line or a linear growth line, arithmetic and linear, are used um, commonly to describe growth and time. It's kind of that traditional straight line. This is a nice curve. Global population, it grows on this way. Um, we were not really doubling until you start looking at 1900, and then we essentially went from a million to two, or I mean a billion in 1900, around there, to two billion in 1950. To then um, by 1975, we were at 4 billion, and then by 2000, we were over around 6 billion, and now, you know, 2020, 18, we're around 7.6 billion, and we're expected to be up near 9 billion by the year 2050, if not sooner. So, global population for humans growing exponentially. The US EPA has water quality criteria for bacteria. When you put bacteria on a petri dish with unlimited food for them or near unlimited food for them if it's not too dense, they will grow exponentially. Bacteria generally all grow exponentially. So they, they double quickly when there's available nutrients. So the EPA has what's called a GM, a geometric mean for fecal bacteria in water. So they actually take the average amount of fecal bacteria, the geometric mean average to be specific, or we just call it the geometric mean, for their water samples in a given month. Fecal indicator bacteria like E. coli, these magenta colored colonies, are useful for determining whether or not that water body, whether it be a lake or river, is safe for people to swim. So they use these indicators to say, hey, it's not safe to swim when E. coli levels get too high because there could be all these other things associated with fecal bacteria like viruses and actual fecal associated pathogens like Salmonella and Campylobacter that could cause illness. So the EPA says that for a given month, for a given month, the geometric mean should never be more than 126. So they take all the monthly samples. If they had 18 monthly samples, you would take all those geometric means from each day, multiply them, and then you're not going to divide by 18. You're going to do the 18th root of whatever you multiplied all together. So that would give you the geometric mean. And if it exceeds 126, the EPA says that will cost um, more than 36 illnesses per thousand on average for people swimming there and uh, no single day should exceed their statistical threshold value of 410. This is not related to the geometric mean. This is related to the geometric mean. So, all right. So with regards to how we do this in practice,
So we've got four numbers here or more. We could have 10 or 20, whatever it might be, 3,000. So how do we do this? Well, you would multiply the numbers, in this case, 3, 4, 2, and 5, and then do the nth root. So if you have four numbers, you do the fourth root. That is on Microsoft Excel or in a mathematical equation where you don't have a square root sign, you would take it to the one-fourth power or 0 0.25 power. In case of a square root, square root is 2, 0 0.5 power. That's how you get the geometric mean. So if we were to calculate the geometric mean of 3, 4, 2, and 5, we uh, do, the, do the math, 3 times 4 times 2 times 5 to the one-fourth power. So there's no square, to, you know, like we talk about square root, there's no like fourth root on a calculator. So we usually just do to the one-fourth power. So 120 times, or to the 0 0.25 power, and that gives us 3.31. Um, we can do this in uh, Stata and Excel. In Stata, um, to get the arithmetic and geometric mean, you can do multiple variables or just one at a time. So variable X is optional here. You only have to do one. A means type in the variable. If you have five variables, it'll give them all at once. In Excel, we highlight the data. And um, in Excel, we can also highlight the data um, for the command average and for the command geomean. So we'll do a few examples here in a second. So if we're interested in the median um, or the average for what we just did, 3, 4, 2, and 5 in Excel, I'll pull it up, Excel, sample 3, 4, 2, and 5. If we want the actual average, of 3, 4, 2, and 5, pretty easy. J2 to J5, it gives it, we want the geometric mean, geo mean, 3, 4, 2, and 5. Easy enough. Now notice there is a difference between these. So 3.31 is what we got. What did we have in the actual PowerPoint earlier for those? 3.31, easy enough. So that was the command. If you had to do it by hand, I'm going to show you, you can type in equals 3 times 4 times 2 times 5. That gives us 120. If we want the square root of 120, I can, if I want the square root of 120, I can get it, but I don't want the square root. I want 120. I'm going to hit the shift 6 button on mine, 120 to the parenthesis, 0 point, I had four numbers, so 1 divided by 4 to the 1 fourth power, to the 0.25 power, or equals 120 to the shift 6, to get the little caret button there, 120 to the 1 over 4 to the 0 0.25 power. That's the geometric mean. So if we want to do this in Stata, let me clear this out real quick. So I had data on life expectancy. You can still see it. Um, and uh, the command was A means life expectance for. And when we did that, it gave us the arithmetic geometric harmonic. If I go to the data editor and manually enter numbers that we used before in Excel, 3, 4, 2, and 5, I'm going to copy and paste these in, I'll give them a name, sample, I'm going to copy them, control C, I'm going to go over to Stata, paste them in, I paste them in to Stata, they're there, see them? And then I can do A means sample. And then that gives me the same numbers that we got from Excel, a arithmetic and geometric mean. I can also type in sum sample, and that gives me the mean as well and a standard deviation. And we'll go into more detail on the other measures of central tendency here in the next video. All right. Thank you.